So, hey look, we're here at uh, 3D Salvan 2023. I'm on the QRP Lab stands. And I'm joined by Hans Summers. Hi Hans. Hi, thank you. Nice and, to see you uh, Yeah, nice to see you again. I think we were here this time last year. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time you were showing us the QDX. That was the right. latest and greatest yep. kit that you had for sale. But I think things have moved on a bit since then. And I think you were saying you've just been over to Dayton and launched a new product. Yes, uh, in Dayton. So I only started doing the real design work and development on this in the beginning of January and we launched this uh, new five band transceiver kit which is the same size as the old QCX mini single band CW transceiver kit but has CW and digital five bands has an SWR meter built in and it will also do sideband in the near future so, so for the sideband there, yeah. we don't have a linear power amplifier we'll be using the envelope elimination restoration technique which means you split the sideband up into a phase component and an amplitude component and you modulate those separately. Cool. So that will be just firmware update. So um, pretty much in everything you've got in the old products in the same box right. plus SSB in the future yeah. as well. With a very small price increment. So um, yeah, basically it was the QCX, all the functions of QCX Mini, all the functions of QDX plus SSB plus an SWR meter. Um, I also included these buck converter modules so it has lower receive current. Okay. So one of the disadvantages when you go for top performance and you have a really good um, SDR, embedded SDR with a powerful processor, and this is running at 168 megahertz, okay. is that you consume a chunk of current. Yeah. So this would use 220 milliamps of okay. receive current, which is for people who want to do portable operations. Pretty important, um, yeah. It's important. So yeah. with the switching converters, we got it down to 80 milliamps on wow. receive, um, which compares, which is much less than a lot of other manufacturers with comparable performance um, portable radios. The important thing is that the uh, buck converters don't create switching noise because right. the microcontroller is the control loop for the buck converter and it sets the PWM frequency such that the harmonic avoids the operating frequency. That's handy. Okay. So it's a very nice uh, technique that I developed uh, for this. And do you find many customers use these for portable operations, like sort of example? I mean, so far it's very new. Right. Um, so I think it will be fantastic for SOTA. I think it will probably become uh, the ideal SOTA rig because it has very low current, top performance, five bands. Um, we may launch a new version in future which covers a different set of bands. So right. this covers 80 to 20. Sure. We'll certainly launch a 20 to 10 meter version like we have for QDX. But I'm also thinking maybe a 60 to 15 meter version okay. would also fit the hardware, just be changed in filter components. Right. Yeah. And a lot of SOTA people have indicated that that would be quite useful for them. That's good. Um, so it'll be great for SOTA. Um, Hannes was visiting me in my location in, in Turkey a couple of weeks ago and we recorded a video that's on the QRP Labs YouTube channel. We took this to a small mountain nearby right. and uh, a set of eight AA batteries and yeah we sat beautiful on top of the mountain, nice weather, a bit of sea breeze, the sea was down on one side, beautiful environment, um, sat under an olive tree and we operated for two or three hours and wow. we worked ten countries that between like us a lot of fun. and uh, it, was, it was huge fun. Yeah. And have you had much feedback? I know it's only a new product, it's only been about, it's been out about a few weeks now, but yeah, have you had much, much feedback Dayton, from customers? Yeah. Um, everybody's very excited about it um, because there's a lot of functionality in a very small box. The current consumption is great, the performance is fantastic. Uh, it's a radio with a lot of potential, so what I was aiming to do by May for Dayton was the CW functionality of Q6 Mini and the digital functionality of yeah. QDX yeah. and to include a very powerful hardware platform with lots of future expansion possibilities. Sure. So, of course, people are having ideas about what to do next and so on. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of excitement about it. And this. I suppose being software defined, actually, future change is actually difficult to apply because it's software. Right, yeah. It's having to get the soldering iron out. And right, exactly. And so that the aim is that all the, all the enhancements will be software only. Sure. And the software update is very easy. You put it into software update mode from the menu. When it's in software update mode, we put a USB connection to the PC and it shows up on the PC as a USB flash drive, like a memory stick, plug yeah. in a memory yeah. stick. And you just download a new firmware file and copy it in. And so it's very easy compared to a lot of radio manufacturers where you need a software application. Um, and then, you know, it's partly selfish for me because I don't want to write software for Mac, Linux, Windows and deal with Windows drivers and support yeah, yeah. all Supporting of that. Supporting three different, well, multiple platforms. It would just yeah. be a headache. So yeah. I spent the time to make this uh, bootloader here, which pretends to be a USB flash drive, and you yeah. just copy in the firmware. 
It also has 256-bit AS encryption, so I'm going to be immune from any cloning or copying. Okay, that's clever. Um, so that's also in the bootloader. So you, the, the files are encrypted when they're published, and, and it decrypts as well. Ah, oh, that's very useful. So yeah. it means that somebody can't come along and do something naughty, basically, yeah. Right, yeah. That's useful. It's not possible to copy. The, the firmware. And is it? And is it? Um, is it so is it five watts? I've forgotten the output. It's uh, five watts output. Five watts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have nice CW keying shaping using the Harris Blackman uh, Blackman Harris algorithm, not okay. raised cosine or Gaussian. So it actually has better performance than raised cosine and Gaussian shapes. Okay. Um, SWR meter, as I said, there's a lot of opportunity for protection of the radio against high SWR because you've got the meter in line all the time as well. And how have you fared with the, I've uh, talked to a lot of the manufacturers with the, um, obviously there was a pandemic, right. kind of hopefully over that now, yeah. but I know the kind of hangover has been issues around getting yeah. components and yeah. that sort of thing, how, how have you come up with, come with that? It has been very difficult, um, so it's eased up a bit now, um, but there were times where we had to find new suppliers, new supply chains, there was an issue with the QDX right. where the ADC chip we were using was obsolete or and there was a factory fire in Japan oh, right. um, and they decided to obsolete that and the price went from two dollars per chip in big quantity to fifty dollars or something wow. ridiculous and okay. so I had to spend three months re-engineering around this uh, Texas Instruments chip that we're using now um, and so I wasted three months that was very hard uh, yeah. It ends up actually being better performance, so we got okay. about 60 dB more dynamic range out of it, which so was a nice. So there is a there is a benefit. There was a nice upside, side. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been very hard. It increased costs. We had to be very nimble about changing components in some cases, changing the design a bit to fit it. Yeah. I think the manufacturers who have been able to be nimble um, and flexible in their approach to making component changes will have probably come through okay. Yeah. But there are some manufacturers who, you know, their production department is so far separated from their design department. If the design department right. specified a particular part number, nobody dares change that forevermore. And when that part no number goes obsolete, everything's gone wrong. So yes, interesting. Um, I think so it depends on you so have to be flexible. So being independent and small actually has a benefit because right. you'd be more flexible and nimble, like yeah. you say, to. Uh, to, 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 to respond to that right. sort of change. I mean, yeah. three months is a long time, but actually that's not that long a time to make such a big change. Right, yeah, I mean, so, it uh, was a lot of work, but it was also very interesting. As I said, it got some advantage too, so. Sure. Um, it's, it's been interesting <laughs> the last it few years. It sounds like you're obviously a busy guy. I know you've been all to Dayton, you've been here in Peru, so I know yeah. you go to a lot of these events. I tend to go to two or three per year. Um, obviously, there's a ham fest somewhere in the world yeah. practically every weekend. and. You could go to all of them and you could probably sell enough stuff to pay for the ticket, but you'd go insane pretty quickly. Well, because so you're, you're also doing all the development, right. the support, the sales. I know yeah. you've got a bit of help, yeah. but you are pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we have quite a lot of help in, in uh, Turkey. We have uh, six full time employees okay. who are doing kitting, packing, shipping, assembly, because all of sure. the four transceivers we also send as, sell as assembled, okay. tested, calibrated radios, uh, okay, right. as well as kits. That's good. Um, my wife's doing a lot of work as well with admin and management and accounting, banking, customs, import duty. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the research and design, all the technical side, support side, documentation, all comes down to Comes to so. you. <laughs> and actually, the documentation you mentioned that. I mean, I've, I've built a few of the kits in the past, and people do, and I would agree. You know, it's, it's, the, the build documentation is fantastic. There's right. no, it, you know, it's very clear what you've got to do, where the components go. You know, it's the fullest of all the stuff that should be in the bot in the in the bag. Which, you know. All that is very, very well done. So that's, yeah. uh, that that's makes actually, life a lot easier for us. That's as, actually as, as also for selfish reasons for me, because there'll be less of you <laughs> coming to me for help. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I can put some time into good documentation and save it back later with less, less, less that's support. A good, that's a good use of time. <laughs> so right. it's a win-win for everybody. So yeah. Hans, look, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you want to to highlight before we, uh, before we finish up. Well, I think since we last spoke, we had a couple of other new things. We've got the Progrock 2, which is a synthesizer. Okay. Um, very small. It's, it fits inside an HG6 crystal can. Okay. Um, so that's a kind of breakout for a SI 53518A synthesizer and has a processor so it can store a set of frequencies. Um, the balloon, Pico Balloon Tracker the balloon is also thing. very, I mean, last very time, popular. Yeah. yeah. And I actually, we've been working on that since 2015. Um, but only in the last year or something actually really got in production and is that, properly. So is that it there? That's it, yeah. Well, I mean, that is small. Well, it looks, it will look even smaller once it's ready for flight. Then you break off the 
USB connector, and then the remaining board is oh, about 1.8 grams wow. weight. And then you power um, that from? You do it typically with some small solar panels. Okay. Um, I actually did my first ever flight, because I've been the armchair balloon guy, doing right. the protocol, telemetry, <laughs> the uh, firmware, PCV design. And then my friend Dave V3KCL in Canada did all the launches and actual right. flight tests. Sort of testing and things, um, yeah, yeah. But my wife came up to me about a week before Dayton, so it was perfect timing. Um, obviously, not my wife, my daughter, nine-year-old daughter, and she said, "Oh, mummy says we've got a science fair next Tuesday, and we're going to fly a ah, U4B." So <laughs> <laughs> no, but of course I couldn't say no, and we we managed to do it, and it was fantastic. Um, right. We did pretty much everything wrong, but the hardware worked great, and we managed to get a three-day flight out of it. So it was more That's than we had cool. expected, given the. Where, how far did it travel? Out of interest. It went out across. So I live in southwest Turkey. It flew out across Cyprus. Lebanon, Jordan, Saudi wow. Arabia, uh, Iran, and into Afghanistan, and that lasted three days. Wow. Um, and then it must have leaked gas. And then you were tracking the, tracking it all the way. Right, we were tracking all the way with Whisper. Uh, the QRP Labs website has tracking maps and telemetry receiving. Um, I mean, we were, you know, you're supposed to seal the neck of the balloon with heat sealing, and okay. but we just tied it with some birthday <laughs> ribbon and stuff like that. So there was no, the fact that it got to three days. It's we even impressive. said the fact that it left the school playground was a miracle in itself because you know you're supposed to have a wide open area, no wind, no clouds, right, okay. um, no kids, and we had hundreds of screaming kids. Playground with power lines on two sides oh, wow. and wind and clouds. Well, hopefully she got good dread anyway for the project. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it was it was um, it was really good fun, and the kids loved it. And it, to me, it just highlighted the valuable opportunity we have with oh, yeah. things like that in amateur radio, in education, because it's yeah. perfect for STEM and topics. And it's funny you that, I think the theme of the show this year is, is around STEM and education. Right. I think you call right. it, I was chatting to Bob at the end of where I was saying it's called MINTS in German. Right. I don't know small, but it's obviously the same as STEM, so science, technology, yeah. etc. So, uh, but I mean, it's a perfect, interest? you yeah. know, this is a perfect application for that. And, you know, to see the kids and how excited they were, they were all crowded over her iPad watching the map and seeing where oh, the see altitude. Where it was going. And, yeah, we had it all live there on, on wow. the iPad um, as it was going up. What's the altitude? Where is it going? And, you know, in the early parts of the flight, they knew all the villages that it was Plus, over and yeah, stuff yeah. nearby as it was going up. And so the interest was fantastic and, and it really highlighted the, the STEM applications for kids. Um, Absolutely. Because, yeah, like, you know, kids can understand stuff like that and really get excited by it. They can physically see it, watch it, yeah. track it, and Build that excitement. That's yeah. a fantastic way of getting people into it. It's like your own miniature stuff. space probe. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're tracking it. You're getting back data, and you build the thing, and it even looks a bit like a, you know, it's got the solar panels and everything. Um, but of course, the cost is very minimal. You, you do a flight for under seventy dollars, including yeah. everything. Wow. So it's a very convenient, economic. Sounds fantastic. Thing, yeah. yeah. I was really surprised. So just how tiny that is. I mean, you say if that half of it is actually. The USB port that you yeah. broke off anyway. Yeah. So, uh, and I was surprised how easy it was to get going. I, I should know because I developed it, but it was it was really easy to do. Um, we got six of these tiny 32 by 19 millimeter solar panels. You buy them in a hundred pack from from right. China, and it was very very easy. So right. really great fun. <laughs> great. So look, Hans, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. If people want to know more about QRP Labs or want to make a purchase, what yeah. would what, what's the best to do that? Uh, QRPlabs.com, QRP-Labs.com. Uh, yeah. We have all the information on all the products, all the assembly manuals, operating manuals, schematics, everything is there, firmware, um, links to the shop pages, all the information is there, tons of information on the website. So great. We also have YouTube channel with some YouTube site upload occasionally. Um, I'm going to put together a YouTube video of the balloon launch as well. That's um, good, so yeah. We'll we have seen that like, one, yeah. got a lot of clips of that, um, just haven't edited them together yet. And um, we've got a groups.io group, QRP Labs, which is very popular. I think on that one, actually, yeah. We've got yeah. over 7,000 members, so um, that's the place to go. Excellent. So, look, Hans, thank you very much. And thank we'll you. And we'll see you again next year. I'm sure you Best will. Best of luck. Cheers. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye now.